Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to the top 10 craziest Judge Judy cases. Now Judge Judy, like that show went on for a long time. I think she announced that she was retiring, I think in around 2020, but the show had been running for like 20 something years. And uh, she must have seen a whole variety of cases, like probably everything possible she must have seen. So this video of the top 10 must be, you know, I'm imagining these must be some real, just absolutely crazy, uh, just un unprecedented stuff that has just that rarely happened. So I'm sure it's gonna be a fun watch. So let's do it. All rise. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 craziest Judge Judy cases. And as he was breaking one of the televisions, it fell on your cat and killed it. <gasps> yes. Oh mm -hmm. my yes. God. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're raising our right hands and taking an oath of jaw-dropping proportions. From bizarre lawsuits to questionable plaintiffs and defendants, these are the cases that'll make you go, what? Parties may now be seated. Number 10, you're a moron. <laughs> Judge Judy can be a bit intense, but there's usually a calm before the storm. Usually. Now, if you sense a certain harshness in my tone, it's because unless I was reading incorrectly in your answer, you say that five years ago, when your daughter was six years old, you had a talk with her and you told her that there was a chance that he wasn't her father. Right off the bat, you can feel the hostility Judy has towards the defendant. And if you can't... To be honest, is that a conversation you have with a six-year-old? Like... I mean, yes, you want to, you know, have that conversation at some point, but six? Judy is more than happy to point out how harsh of a tone she's using as she reads the details of the case. You're a moron. <laughs> you are a moron. Wow. You are an example of why people should have to take tests before they're allowed to have children. Agreed. I 100% agree. If you have to take a driving test, you, ha you should take a child bearing test. I fully agree. This is because the defendant apparently told her six-year-old that her father may not actually be her father before actually knowing the truth. Oh, Judy what? So she didn't even know? And comments on the defendant's intelligence Come to make on. her feel two centimeters tall. A moron! <laughs> and you still don't even get it! Oh, and of course, there's that iconic yell. He was messing around first, Your Honor. Who cares? He didn't become pregnant. As far as I know, that's not a possibility yet. Number nine, push. Look, we get it. It's embarrassing to be kicked out of the courtroom, especially if you're not the first, but the second person in your group to go. Okay, sir, you can step out. Because that shows that you just can't listen. And Judy has no time for the likes of you. Maybe she had well, to I have to tell you something. I have Ooh. to tell you something. The defendant, not willing to let well enough alone, had the audacity to talk back to Judy on his way out, then turned to storm through the doors that wouldn't open for him. Push. Push. Out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. How embarrassing. You got kicked out and you can't even get the door to open. <laughs> Forget embarrassed, uh, this is outright humiliation oh at this my point. God. As he shrugs his shoulders to ask, how do I get out? You can hear him being told to push, not pull. Number eight, <sighs> the fake case. There's always debate on whether or not the cases we see in any televised courtroom drama are real. And as he was breaking one of the televisions, it fell on your cat and killed it. Yes. Hmm? Yes. While the jury will always and forever be out on that one, we can say with utmost certainty that this particular case is an absolute work of fiction. On what date? Is yeah, because the way she like she when she said yes, she kind of laughs and then it got she tries to make her face look sad. Yeah, that wasn't genuine. This gathering, November fifth. Keep your voice up, please, Miss Levitt. Sorry, November 5th, 2009. In an interview with Vice in 2014, it's revealed that the case about smashed TVs and the tragic death of a cat was made up purely for the settlement money and free trip to LA. The only what? ones in the house? I thought you were there with six people. No, they went, to go, they went to go rent a movie from the Red Box. There was no fight and thankfully no dead cat. While it'll definitely make us question the validity of a case, the defendant did at least confirm that Judy is really that intimidating in real life. Number seven, 
it's not the same dressing. Customer service with a smile, extra dressing, and vandalism? The plaintiff in this case is the textbook definition of first world problems. Couldn't eat the sandwich? Not, not by that time, because we normally put the salad dressing on the sandwich too. That's why we order extra for the salad and the sandwich. You can understand being upset about part of your delivery missing. Hold on, so he, he, this guy, he's, he's, he's come to court over dressing, over sandwich dressing. Dude, do you not have better things to do with your time? <laughs> but to demand a full refund over dressing, two weeks later, the plaintiff not only ordered again, but he snatched the food out of the driver's hand and slammed the door in his face, what? claiming he had a credit. It was very immature of you. Still, according to the law, that doesn't give the restaurant guys the right to vandalize his property in retaliation. What? It does give Judy the power of pettiness. The plaintiff wins, but he has to pay the money back from his last meal. A whole twelve dollars. Two hundred and twenty-nine dollars point twenty-three less twelve. <laughs> Number six, horse counterclaim. Judge Judy is pretty good about giving each side a chance to plead their case. But if there's one area where she really doesn't mess around, it's horse disputes. Judgment on the counterclaim for fourteen hundred dollars. We're done. Thank you. <laughs> that is our excuse. As evidence that was fast expressions in the courtroom Judy swoop she stunned <laughs> in with a particularly swift dose of justice for summer Ruger who demanded the full payment from the plaintiff for one horse mm. oh my gosh fourteen hundred dollars for a horse is it me that's really really cheap isn't it that's really cheap <sighs> The case, while bizarre enough on its own, is followed up by a soap opera-worthy reaction from the plaintiff, who just can't believe the injustice she's been handed. If her reaction is any indication, she'll think twice next time she tries to horse around with the law. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Sorry, I, whatever. Number five. Could, could she quit it? <laughs> Gasping woman. It goes without saying that defendants on Judge Judy will go to some pretty weird lengths to get their case heard. But for Devisha Thomas, it was actually a little hard to hear the case over her bizarre gasping. Put it all on. Yes. Just put on your lipstick, <gasps> little lip, lip gloss, little <gasps> eye stuff. As a desperate attempt to plead ignorance to the fact that her car insurance had expired, the defendant answers multiple questions with an exaggerated gasp. I had no idea he paid that much for that car. <laughs> 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 Well, why didn't, didn't you know. just... It's clearly not working on Judge Judy, who is adamant that Thomas simply uh. act responsibly as a car owner. Despite the defendant's claim over who altercated the fight, Judge Judy simply wasn't buying it. Number four, for mature audiences. Oh. We're not judging anyone for their chosen profession, and neither is Judy for that matter. You just might have to explain it to her. Um, we go into homes and hold parties for adults um, with lotions and potions and vibrators. Such was the case when the plaintiff had to explain Whoa. her adult novelty party business to Judy, who was able to connect the dots when told about the lotions and, more specifically, vibrators. Um, the bull whip, one of a set of two C-rings, ten catalogs, making love oil um, flavor. Making love oil. <laughs> you mean lube? <laughs> Strawberry and champagne. Her face. <laughs> This leads to the plaintiff listing off the names of every item that went missing, both Judy and her bailiff Bernard expressing various levels of huh, as if trying to figure out what everything is. Then the sex B-bomb is dropped. One of the items was returned used. Poor, poor Judy. Used? The eager beaver which appeared to be used. <laughs> the eager beaver. <laughs> um, so that may have been used, but we would have appreciated that to have been cleaned up before she returned it to us. Number three, uh. Tupperware assault. Judge Judy always looks like she's seen some things. That being said, there are times when the plaintiff says something so unbelievable that she, as they say, can't even. She um, opened her Tupperware cupboard and um, forced all of her Tupperware on her like that. <laughs> when a plaintiff tells her that the defendant threw not just one or two, but all of- I love how she acted it out, even though she, you know, quite clearly described what happened, but she had to, she had to, uh, <laughs> her Tupperware on her, not at her, Judy calmly says she didn't throw all of her Tupperware on you. you pointing your finger in my face, how dare you? Don't you even dare, shame on you. That's it, I want you out of here. And she hit my head. Oh, ye of little faith. Because the plaintiff not only insists that it happened, she gives a live demonstration, complete with aggressive voice acting, a lot of finger pointing and scrunched up faces. <laughs> at least the Tupperware wasn't full of food. Or that last lady's lotions. 
Number two. That woman should get into like a, a amateur dramatics, some kind of acting, because she's clearly got the, the facial expressions. The <laughs> Lizards. If you haven't figured it out by now, some of the guests on Judge Judy aren't exactly what you'd call the sharpest tools in the shed. Case in point, when our next defendant came to plead her case over an assault charge, Judge Judy quickly demands to know why they were swearing at the plaintiff. What were you cursing at them for? Because they're losers. <laughs> Her answer, while well, not only provoking a court-wide groan for butchering the word Because they're losers. <laughs> losers? Actually demonstrates that she initiated the conflict with the defendant, securing Judge Judy's decision almost immediately. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $4,000. That's all, step out. Next time you want to accuse someone of assault, maybe make sure you're not actually the one who initiated it. I don't think it's this is a fair justice. Before we bang the gavel, let's hear the opening statement of this honorable mention. Left and right. Listen, I can't deal with you anymore, sir. I can't. I can't deal with you anymore, sir, because mm -hmm. if you just kept your mouth shut five minutes ago, Number one, venison will get you nowhere. When will people learn that you have to venison. get permission before you take something from someone else? Even if you supposedly take it all the time. I just use it all the time and she wasn't home, so I went over there to get the key and went and the deer just jumped out in front of me. In yet another case of I'm always able to borrow the thing, two sisters find themselves in court over damage done to a car. What'd you do with it? Ate it. <laughs> Is that true? Yes, ma'am, and she even offered me some. The defendant got into a wreck with her sister. Hold on, so she stole the venison from her sister's then. car, crashing into a deer, but since she takes the car all the time and has helped her sister sometimes, she thinks she should be in the clear. At least she was nice enough to oh. offer some of the deer. Yeah, the deer she hit with her sister's car. Yep, what? you're still gonna have to pay back that $1,300. Of course. I'm not having a rigor mortis stew, I know. did not have rigor mortis, so I went back. I'm, that is, that is I love their accents. They sound so country. <laughs> Do you agree with our pick? You can just tell that Judge Judy has probably seen seen it all, honestly. Like, you could just, like, the way she just seems so unfazed. No matter what anybody says, the, her facial expression rarely changes. Like, yeah, she's seen it all. Like, from I saw an episode here that started, it was a, a 1996 episode and the show just got cancelled. Well, not cancelled, but she retired in 2020. So 24 years at least. Yeah, what a legacy. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.